Oh, like, let's check this out. Comes in, looks around. Are you worried? Waits here. That's great. I know this was my idea, but <laughs> I actually really like this because it's, it tells us more about how he feels because he goes to the back of it. It's cool. Watch out. We are looking here and then across the cut, we're looking here. I think you could easily have his body here. So it matches across the cut a bit more. And then when he sits back down, I'm assuming he sits back down. See, so then he can still move his root back. And then he ends up here, which is then a more balanced composition because it gives him more room here because he's looking this way. That's good. Yeah, it's going to be great. I like it. I like it a lot. It's really cool. And then in your, in your blocking too, uh, when you start with this, how fast this door opens, how he comes in, like what comes in first, is it going to be his leg, his arm, his head peeking in, all that is going to tell us something about his state of mind. How he closes this, is he just, I mean you're telling me already he's looking back, but you know, imagine he would just walk and then, you know, like there are different things where, how many times has he been in a church, does he walk and keep his hand behind him to kind of make sure he closes softly but that means it's almost like he knows how to walk through a door like this which you know again storytelling wise is he coming back to a church or is this kind of the first time for him if it's kind of the first time this is kind of neat because he has to kind of look how he closes uh, is he going to let it bang is he going to let it you know is he going to make sure that it closes softly which i'm assuming that's what you're going to do which is cool and then that's cool. All that is cool too. And even here, like that little swing. I don't. I don't know your intention right now in this, but this could be neat. Where he might almost feel the back of um, of that thing here. Like he's trying to. Like he's he's looking this way, but he brings his arm back and almost kind of taps his hand to kind of feel where is it. All right. He he kind of wants to blindly sit down. Like he reaches arm out to hold. But he doesn't quite know where it is. Like little details like that, which also makes him more frail. Um, and you can always do that and then stop and then move on to this arm, which is fine too. And then what I said here. Um, yeah, so my, my kind of thoughts. And then you're asking about tips for starting blocking and being efficient. To me, the way I do it is um, I do, you know, imagine, I'm going to bring this down here. Imagine this is my Maya timeline. I set a key roughly like every four frames. Let's pretend this is four frames. Every four frames, I set a key and uh, I key the whole character except hands and maybe facial stuff. So I got my major poses, you know, however, whatever you're doing, if that's your, your passing or, if, you know, if someone's jumping and you got a squash and then you got your pull extension and you got your squash at the top, whatever it is, I do my major poses that kind of tell the story. Of course, depending on your actions, you might have obviously a lot more um, uh, poses, you know, not that broad. But I don't really care about timing as much. I mean, I kind of make sure that after four frames, that's where the body will be. After four frames, it will be here. But then I move these guys around in the timeline. So that ends up being going from every four frames to, you know, this might be, might be like that. You know, this might be this might be my timeline at the ends, so that I'm doing roughly the timing that I like. So after the main pose, I go, okay, this is kind of the timing. Now this moves the way I want it, and it kind of works for me. And then I go layered. <clears throat> so then I concentrate. Okay, let's do the root first. And make sure everything works with the root, and then the chest, and then the head, so that because the root is going to influence everything else in the, on your rig. <clears throat> so once I fix that. It's going to be much easier to to fix this. So I go big big body parts first, right? And then this, and then arms and legs. If you do a walk, which you do here, I would probably do this in conjunction with that, and then the chest. But I always kind of go back and forth between feet and roots because of uh, you know, and then to some degree, obviously the pelvis as well for weight shifts. But I kind of whoops, I kind of go through that. I kind of set the main timing, and then I shift around the the these guys in a timeline to get my main. Uh, movement and timing right and then I go layer and I go uh, body part by body part just to make sure uh, and that has served me pretty well so far in terms of blocking and being efficient because by keying everything like this 
and moving just those main keys and because the whole body is keyed, it's very fast. I can make very quick changes. And if I move, for instance, this key over to be here, but then the pose is kind of weird. I just adjust the pose on this, right? If I need more drag or more offset, I already put this all in my main blocking. I don't do drag overlap and stuff in the later pass. I do this all in the first pass, especially offsets, because why not? I mean, I don't, I don't need to wait. I know what needs to be offset. Um, so that has helped me uh, pretty well. And obviously shooting reference or finding reference or just making sure that you know what you're doing, not going blindly in it. Every time I just start a shot without a plan, I'm definitely not as efficient as I would be if I had it planned out. And then for ultimate efficiency, uh, for something like this, I would set up my camera, I would find a bench, act exactly this one out, right? You want to shoot your reference to look like it's exactly like a shot, like camera angle-wise, prop-wise, and all that stuff. And I would sit down, I would do all the acting, I would bring this footage into Maya, right? And basically rotoscope this whole thing. And it sounds like blasphemy, but basically that way I know, is the acting going to work with my rig, the scale of my rig, with my camera angle and my set? And I know it is within five minutes, because again, I'm just going to rotoscope everything every four frames or every three frames. But then when you're done, it's going to look rotoscoped. It's just like ass. So then what I do is I go, you know, when you shoot reference or whatever and you, you do thumbnails to look at the best poses, I basically do this. But because I have everything keyed out, I start deleting things. So I go, I like this pose. I like this pose. I like this pose. And I start deleting everything in between. Uh, and maybe at some point I like, like a specific head move exactly the way I rotoscoped it. And so I might keep a lot more keys. And then once I have, you know, usually I delete like 70%. And then I go in and put in offsets and keyframe and do the proper ease ins and outs. But that is when I'm in, in a big crunch at work. I, I do that because it's, you're never going to end up being uh, using the rotoscope stuff. But for blocking, I mean, I basically block stuff out in 5-10 minutes. And it's, or yeah, I mean, depending on your on your complexity and how many characters you have. But if you just if you have your footage and you copy your footage, take a couple of keys out, spline it, and you go like, yeah, that could work. It's gonna look like ass, but it gives you a pretty good idea of your acting choices applied to this rig. You know the size of the head, eye line, and everything that's gonna work out. And then you can start going back in there and, and re-keyframe for proper looks and arcs and all that stuff. All right, hope that makes sense. If not, you can always let me know. All right. All right. There's an email, you can sign up, you can start whenever you want, you can submit whenever you want, you get 16 submissions. Either way, a like and subscribe would be awesome. All right, thank you.